Hello, welcome to Area 51, um, part 11. Arise and more. Uh, I've added and more because I've got some detail of combining a few of the items that we've already seen uh, into something practical. Um, just a few lines of code to make something work just the way we want it and to just have a look at that, how powerful automation can really be. But let's get started with arrays. So let's define a very straightforward array. And we'll call our array A and we'll say array A contains A, B and C. And we're going to echo um, A, the first element. Okay, very straightforward. Second element, the third element. What happens if we specify an element that doesn't exist? It doesn't work. Notice that elements are zero indexed, zero, one, two, and what happens when we enter multiple characters? And we'll have a look at one. Hmm. So that works, but what about because B is our um, zero and one, B is our first, uh, our second, but our first uh, in terms of the index uh, element. What if we say this is a single sentence and this too? And we just separate it with a comma or something like that. Okay, so now each of these is interpreted as uh, a single word separated by space. So the way to work around this is we could add quotes, but this will still not work. Notice that comma that we have there. That comma is an element too. So notice that commas are not interpreted, it's actually spaces that we need. Great, so now we have our first element with index 0 and we have our second element with index 1. So, <coughs> in recap, the uh, declaring an array can be done by using parentheses. Uh, we specify our elements separated by space. If we have multiple words with a space in between, we just use uh, single quotes or double quotes if we want to insert maybe some variables within the array and make it more complex. Um, so all this is fairly straightforward. Now let's go back here and have a look what happens if we use a special syntax of the add symbol. So in that case, all of the elements are output. We can also put a hash in front of our A and now it gives us the count. So there is two elements in this array and we can count it. Uh, this is often referred to as a, as a count symbol I suppose in, in, in just standard writing. So count how many variables are in the array A and we want to make sure that we address all the elements so that's why we're using the add symbol. Let's see if something like this would work. Okay. Now, what are we seeing here? Have we got 12 elements in the first element? Did, no. This is not so confusing once you understand what is happening here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Sorry, I'm counting the wrong element. This is uh, element 1. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 10, 11, 12, and so it's the length of the individual element. So <coughs> let's not confuse the number of elements in the full array, 2, 1 and 2, with the length, in terms of characters, of element 1, 12. And if we check element 0, which was the one I was counting originally, of course there's 25, there's quite a few more. Um, we can also use the declare uh, syntax to uh, declare an array more formally. Um, let's output element uh, B2, which would be C, because we're looking at the second element, and that works fine. Um, something very interesting to notice here is we do want to put the curly brackets here and not here. You can see how that completely messed up what we were trying to do because in this case uh, it's interpreting the variable b um, and then to whatever that stands for. In this case it's just standard output. So uh, probably because we 
address the variable b here which starts with a is why it outputs a and then 2 is the literal text 2 so this can become very confusing even if you do it like this it still interprets it like this so don't forget those curly brackets around the full array combined with its index straightforward okay so that gives a, a short rundown of arrays um, you can review the examples uh, so as a quick recap we've seen how to uh, declare uh, in one of the two formats uh, our arrays we've seen how we can address uh, individual elements we've seen how we can uh, address all elements at the same time and notice also that you can use this in a for loop which is maybe one uh, item that we haven't uh, uh, looked at here yet so we're going to say for and we're going to say uh, string in and we're going to address all of the elements so as we said before that's quantified by the add symbol uh, so for string in all of the elements do let's not forget the termination echo and we're going to say string and done so great, uh, two individual strings displayed. So you can see how you can again do very interesting things like um, how about running a subshell and say uh, the ls output for example. So very interesting now, uh, there's our files from the previous parts. Uh, these are just files so don't get confused by the actual numbers. We can just delete them and rerun. Okay, so there you go, that's the, the items that we've been uh, seeing, uh, all the files that we uh, have in our directory, and for each of those, do list them. Um, so we could have instead, to make it a bit more clear, for file in this, do echo file. And we can even make this shorter for file in and this is what we saw in the previous section ls and it's exactly the same so sometimes even complex uh, bash syntax can be easily uh, uh, condensed into something else different people use different types of writing code and it's very often when you review codes of others that you think hey this is handy I want to use this in uh, my upcoming scripts um, when I get into the same situation so let's have a look at uh, a good example of um, using a lot of the things that we've been seeing uh, in, in unison. First uh, we'll have a look at the uh, links command which is one uh, command that we haven't seen yet and it's just basically a text-based browser <coughs> and we're just going to dump the contents of this URL here so let's see what uh, happens when we run this Okay, so there's a lot of output uh, that we've gotten back from uh, this page and you can see it's just basically a text output of uh, of all the contents of that particular page. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to filter out, if we see any errors, we're going to filter out those errors so we know what this uh, uh, means. We just uh, redirect the standard error output to def null. We've seen that before and we're just going to encapsulate this into a subshell and we're going to say uh, assign the contents to this variable but we have way too much now so we're going to grab only the tar.gz uh, files which are uh, somewhere listed here in, in the links uh, section and we're only going to print and you'll remember all of these individual items that we've reviewed we're only going to print a second uh, column and we're going to let's have a look let's have a look first so we're going to run this and you can see how the simple variable assignment is taking some time because it's executing that subshell first before it can uh, uh, give back the output let's see how what we've got so far okay so we've got a little bit of extra information there that we don't necessarily need um, uh, we've got tokdb and whatever here so we're going to grab only 
and we're going to use egrab so that we can use multiple uh, items in the or or like format. See, there's my or um, x eighty six sixty four. Okay, so we're going to grab either for token to be or we're going to grab for uh, sixty four bit. Let's see what uh, we get back then. So again, this is executing in the background each time I'm downloading that page. Okay, so we've got a number of um, files there that we can uh, download. Maybe we'll um, grab minus v md5 sum because we don't want to include uh, those md5 sum files. We just want the actual tars only. Okay, great. So we're now down to two tar files, which is our Percona server and uh, the DokuDB uh, storage engine uh, for Percona server. So we're going to download just those two. Um, and the way that we can do that is we just want to um, have only those two files. Now we're going to use a little bit of a roundabout way just to give an example of some of the other parts of scripting that we've seen. This can probably be written easier, but I'll just do it this way. So here we got a nicely outputted uh, format and um, we're going to use the while loop and we're going to read each of those lines into a variable uh, URL named URL and we're going to, well for the moment we'll just do a echo and the proposed command. We're not actually going to execute it yet. Okay, so that's one command, that's one command and remember how I said you can um, Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this. Anyway, we can now actually do this wget instead of echoing it. And there we go. So, within two lines, we've used links to dump uh, the contents of a page. We've uh, made sure that if there's any errors, uh, they get redirected to the def null output. Uh, so in other words, they're discarded. We're grabbing the tar.gz that we want. We print the specific URLs by just grabbing the second uh, column only. We did some further filtering on that. Uh, we only want these particular items. We're excluding MD5 sum. And once we've got all of that into a simple variable and all this is still on one line, then we print this variable and I suppose we could have continued here and made it a one-liner, but it's, it's getting a little bit complicated. So we print it off, uh, we enter the new line in between and uh, we read those URLs into a new variable URL. and. While this is happening, for each line that is happening, we um, first we, we just did a sanity check and said, okay, echo, we get uh, wget, and wget is just a little utility that just downloads a file uh, from online, very handy, we use it all the time, um, and then for, uh, finish there. So in this case, we that worked, and it was showing the right commands as to how it should be executed. And then we've actually just taken that echo away and literally executed it. And now you can see that it's going to download those uh, two particular files. Um, we're not going to wait, it's clear enough that it's working. So I hope that you enjoyed this uh, uh, practical example of how you can build very powerful scripts in, you know, maybe just 20, 30 minutes. Um, and uh, yeah. In the next section, we'll have a look at some uh, real-life examples of scripts that we've made in the past, and you can get an idea as to how all of these things fit together. Enjoy!